Miss no. Miss Secor. Nobody, no, it's not true. Nobody has to speak. Oh. I thought you did. I thought we had to have one. No, we have to have the opportunity this week. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Katie Cora. I think this category has proved that it has a sufficient diversity of nominations and everything to be worthwhile continuing, and there's a surprising lot of interest in it, and also all of those podcasts slower, then, slower. Sorry, <laughs> then advertise for the Hugos, so I think it's actually a really awesome category as a marketing tool for Worldcon and the Hugos, as well as also being sort of interesting to get introduced to all the podcasts. Is there anyone wishing to speak against this motion? Seeing no one, I'm going to put the question to the floor. I did hear that, but I'll just go and put it. Um, all those in favor of re-ratifying the best fan cast Hugo category, please raise your hands. All right, hands down. Those opposed, hands down. I believe the eyes have it. The best fan cast category is re-ratified. We now move on to A.2, which is uh, the 5% solution. That is also on page four at the bottom of the page. This is to strike references to uh, the 5% reporting requirement. Um, Mr. Stanley, since I know you have a motion, would you like to give it? Mr. Chairman, in deference to our own rules, I will yield to anyone who wishes to speak in favor of the proposal. You're right. Very, I would, if not, I, I want to speak in favor of the proposal. I don't, I don't mind if he gets the motion first as long as I don't forfeit my there, No, I don't. No. Think, no. Oh. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, uh, as the person who actually. Uh, Mr. Stanley, can you hmm. either tilt the mic up or. <laughs> Okay, yesterday, uh, I might add, yesterday I was told I was overdriving the mic, so I was trying not to. Mr. Mr. Chairman, the um, proposal that was submitted last year was drafted by me, although, uh, as I will draft many others, and I wish to admit before the body that I made a significant mistake. Mainly that I just looked for every reference to the word 5% and tried to get rid of it. Consequently, we ended up uh, trying to amend two completely different references to 5% that have not, very little to do with each other. The purpose of this motion truly was to get rid of the threshold, the minimum threshold necessary to appear as a finalist. That's the section you see with the strike through type in it as 3.8.5. I, I guess I just realized I forgot to, make, to actually make the motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to strike section, the second clause of the amendment, which is the part about changing 311.4. Uh, Striking that out means it would not be changed. Second. Thank you. Second. Now I'm going to continue yeah. with my speech uh, on that. Um, the first section of the, of the underlying amendment is to deal with the threshold value. The second half deals with the, what, the top 15 list. And which is not really its top 15, uh, the top 15, it's the top 15 and 5%. It has nothing to do with the threshold for getting on the ballot, and therefore, I believe everybody involved with it is understood on that. Um, therefore, I think we should just go ahead and get rid of the second clause and deal with the real issue, which is the threshold for getting on the ballot. Thank you. I saw the member in the back in the gray. Do you wish to speak against? Sorry, uh, Darcy Connolly. Uh, parliamentary inquiry is if we strike this here, does this have to then be re-ratified all over again after we did this all last year? So it is the ruling of the chair that this would be a lesser change because it is making it go back closer to what the Constitution was before. Um, so this is not re does not require ratification next year. We would be able to pass it at, and ratify it this year. Thank you. Is there anybody wishing to speak against Mr. Stanley's motion? Can you get her name for me? Where did that? Yes. Sorry. Hi, I'm Stephanie Sullivan. Um, 
there's a badge in the very Stephanie Sullivan. Sullivan. That's all I need. Thank you. And if you could just tilt the mic down a little bit, I think. <laughs> that, that better? Yeah. Okay. So I have a point of inquiry because I just want to make sure that I understand what striking the second reference to the 5% will actually do. Um, because the intent is, of course, to make sure that anybody who receives, it seems like anybody who receives any votes would be eligible to be on the final ballot. Um, the f and the second clause is about the reporting requirement about who got how many votes. I just wanted to make sure if we remove this, so people who end up on the final ballot, like if we pass this uh, amendment, somebody who is on the final ballot who got less than 5%, would we still be required to report their numbers? I just wanted to clarify whether or not that, if I'm understanding this correctly. If they appear on the final ballot, they would by definition be one of the top 15. That's and what I thought, yeah. <laughs> I just want to clarify, okay. Is there anybody wishing to speak against Mr. Stanley's motion? Seeing none, I'm going to put the question, all those in favor of removing the reference to section 3.11.4 from the uh, item of business, please raise your hands. All right, hands down. All those opposed? All right, hands down. The motion passes. The second clause is removed from the item of business. It now only strikes through 3.8.5. Mr. Desjardins, would you like to speak in favor of the motion? My name is Stephen Desjardins. Uh, the reason for this motion is basically 2011, 2013, 2014. The short story categories, short story category had only three or four finalists in those years because of the 5% rule. And it's not because there weren't enough worthy potential works for the ballot, it's because there were too many. The vote was divided too many ways. And if you look at the long lists from the 1980s, you'll see that the voting was much more concentrated. Three quarters of the long list would come from just two or three magazines. Everyone was reading the same things. Now the magazine market is much more fragmented. People are reading a lot of different things. They're nominating a lot of different things. And it has become much harder for any one work to appear on 5% of the ballot. So. It's just conditions have changed, times have changed, the rule is no longer doing any good, so we should get rid of it. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the motion? Mr. Yallow. Certainly the arguments Oh, Ben Yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly the arguments in favor of striking the 5% rule are very strong, and I can certainly think that they are well phrased. The reason that the 5% rule may still be useful is that once you start getting down to that level of work, what you've got is a lot of noise and not a lot of signal. The difference between the fifth place work and the sixth place work, one of which will get on the Hugo ballot and one of which will not, is close enough to a random number uh, that I'm not completely convinced that things down at that level of signal really are real signal as opposed to just random statistical fluctuations. So the 5% rule tries to stop random statistical fluctuations from determining the ballot. I'm not convinced that it serves that purpose adequately, but I believe that the argument says that it might and therefore should be considered. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Mr. Quinn. Yes. 